But whatsoever man sow, that shall he also reap. If you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap to the flesh. Hey, where are you storing your treasures? This word of faith movement is all about money. All about, oh, whatever I say in faith, God got to respond to what I want. To fill my needs. And some of you out there, you're not even search, you're not even seeking after God. You're not even seeking after Godliness. You want to consume things of your worldly lust. You know what lust produce? Sin. You know what sin produce? Wages, sin or death. So you know what you're going to get when you sow into the flesh? Death. Lay my foot up for yourself. Treasures on earth where moth and rust stuff corrupt and thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself what? Treasures in heaven where moth, rust doesn't corrupt and thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Look, you, you got, uh, you people out there, you have your children and look, you want them to be doctors and lawyers and all these, you want them to be professional athletes so they can be like, live like a heathen or a Tiger Woods or some of these fuzzy zealots, the ones out there uh, running around with different women and having orgies and walk, gambling and smoking and drinking. That's no role model to be. You have very few of those athletes standing up and taking a stand against that garbage. It's a bad lifestyle. It's a hellbound lifestyle. And all those individuals are going to find themselves in the lake of fire. This short life that we have, eternity is going to be spent in the lake of fire. Why? Sow into the flesh. And they reap what they sow. Look, why? The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Which one do you want? And you women out there watching this Tyler Perry movie for colored girls, it was for you, huh? So uh, is that how women are? Weak? Uh, you let somebody harm your kid? You're somebody uh, naive, gullible? That, that, uh, a prostitute? That's what, all, that's what all those women were. One was weak. One was a hoe. One was a newsy lady. One was gullible. One was stupid that put up with a, a gay husband. Is that, is that what you are? The reason why people keep falling into these same traps because they're being deceived. They're blaming somebody. They go to Dr. Phil and go to Oprah and Oprah says, oh, did he do that to you? That poor, malicious, evil man. He did that. And you such a beautiful girl. You just do everything right and you just happen to run into a wrong man. No. Which one of those women, now look, one of my, uh, I guess the older woman was supposed to be one that got educated. But what did she do? Was she teaching the younger woman how not to fall into these traps? How not to fall for these thug guys or to fall for a rapist? Letting somebody over your house the second date that you have them? And then showing your behind all in front of that guy? And look, this doesn't justify what the men did. But learn from your mistakes. How are you not going to keep repeating the same mistakes when you're doing the same things? You're headed down the same road. You're headed down the same line. And that end in destruction. You're down the broad path. You women out there, you're in the broad path. You're looking for pretty Ricky. You're looking for somebody to uh, thug or somebody exciting. Look. You so called what you so called virtuous look, most of you don't even know what a virtuous woman is. See, a virtuous woman is one inward of vanilla. A virtuous woman isn't all about her. A virtuous, wo virtuous woman isn't dressing like a harlot with all the makeup and hair and stuff that you got on and jewelry. That's not a virtuous woman. That's a woman of the world. That's what Jezebel was like. She's the opposite of the virtuous woman. A virtuous woman is one inward. Most of you women out there wouldn't know. If a true man came up to you, an honorable man came up to you, you wouldn't know what to do with him. Why? Because you're looking for the wrong thing. You're listening to the wrong people. You're being deceived. God is not mocked. God said if you go after your lust, 
That is going to produce sin. For sin produces death. Destruction. But you keep doing the same thing. And you think it's going to change? You think these so-called pretty boys are going to change? These heathen... Let me get on the men for a little bit. You pathetic, weak will, sorry men out there. No working men. Look, first of all, to, to be a man, you got to be in the household. You make children, you take care of those children. I don't care what you and the woman that you had or fornicated with, if you can't get along, you take care of that child. Because, hey, nobody told you to lie down with that woman and have that child. You take care of that child. I don't care what she does. I don't care if you don't see it. If she doesn't live to you, if you've been going through the court and you're having a hard time and you're not going to see it, no, I ain't going to pay nothing. I can't even see it. So what? Tough. That's what you get for laying down with that harlot that you lay down with. The woman that won't let you see your child. That's what you get for it. You reap what you sow. Take care of that child. Get back in the house. Look, you can't. a man can't be the king unless he learns the word of God. See, a man's not the head of the family unless he learns the word of God. He does it godly. You can't come just throwing your weight around because you think you're big and bad. No, but you got to do it God's way. Godly submission. Both a godly submitting household. We should want our children to grow up to be preachers. To be bishops, to be deacons, to be to work in the ministry, to be godly, to be saved, first of all. But you gotta follow that path before your children do. You are, you are the light to your children. See? You are the light that is gonna shine off of Christ to your children, and they wanna see the light through you. Not Oprah Winfrey, not Dr. Phil, not Michael Bazin. These are bad role models, not Tyler Perry. How can a man put on a woman's garment in public? RuPaul, Tyler Perry, even that uh, Martin Lawrence, Jamie Foxx, dress up like, oh, it's funny, it's, it's, it's funny. When are you going to stop laughing? When are you going to stop being deceived by your laughing, by your mockery? Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, he shall also reap. Look, you say, well, I'm in my church and I know my church is right. Ask yourself that question again. The name of your church, is it of God or is it of men? Now again, once you ask that, answer that question, you got to follow that question. If it's of God, then it's in the scripture, and you should be following it. If it's of men, why are you even following it? Your pastor calls himself pastor or reverend so-and-so. Find in the scripture where somebody was ever called pastor so-and-so, or use that as a title, or Bishop Rabbit's Foot, Bishop, Bishop uh, uh, Reverend Chicken Leg. Where's that in the scripture? If you can't find it, then man made it up. Why are you following it? It's a simple test. A simple litmus test of a false prophet. I don't need to get into much of their doctrine to figure out they're false and that they're ignorant. All I got to do is ask them, what's the name of your church? Is it in the Bible? Nope. False doctrine. And look, don't, say, don't tell me, oh, it's just a name. It's just a name, but we really Christians. We all go to the same place. Don't tell me that. Look, you go to the store, and you buy a, a bottle that says ketchup on it. You get home, and you squeeze that ketchup out. What you think is ketchup? And something blue come out, what you going to do? You're going to take it back to the store and say, look, read this label. That says ketchup. And when I squeezed it, something blue came out. I want my money back. Well, that's what you should be saying about that false prophet. You know what's inside a Baptist organization that says Baptist on the outside? Baptist. You know what's inside a Catholic organization inside that building? Catholics. What's inside a Methodist building that says Methodist on the outside? Methodist. What about this one? What about 
What's inside the Creflo Dollar ministry? Creflo Dollar disciples. You can't get away from it. You are what you call yourself. A name is important. A name is more important than gold. But your false prophet say a name is not important. And the scriptures say in Acts 4, Neither is there not any other name, for there is none other name under heaven, whereby we all must be saved. Your false prophet say a name don't mean nothing now. Who's right? The apostle or your pastor? Your false pastor? So-called reverend. Who right? Be not deceived. God is not mine. Let's go over the book of Acts. And I'm going to close this out. See, there was a time before the scripture was fully revealed that God let a lot of things go. Now, sin is always sin. Whether God punishes that sin, that's on him. God sovereign. He can do whatever he want, when he want, and how he want. So while the word was still being revealed, while God was still laying out his master plan, God so-called overlooked or winked at a lot of things. But that time is over. Why? Because Christ has come. The truth has come. The full revelation we have here in the scriptures. We have it all. There is no excuse to follow a false prophet now. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. The fool said in his heart, there is no God. Michael Basin said, there is no God. And you listen to that? Steve Harvey makes a mockery of God. They have him on the Soul Train Award or the Gospel Awards hosting those things. You know why they can do that? Because they're in fellowship with darkness. Darkness and light don't have any fellowship. You can't get out of one uh, side of your mouth, sit, curse, talk about this and MF this and uh, all this. All. You can't do that and then on the next, um, oh, God is my refuge. Oh, God help me. God ain't helping you doing that. The devil's doing that. The devil will award you. But look, there's a wage for your sin. And you know what the wages of sin? You know the wages are, right? What well, God says there are wages to sin, and God is not mocked. God won't be mocked. God won't be made fun of. But what you sow, you won't reap it. Let's get into this Acts 17 and verse 30 real quick, and I'm going to close this out. For as much then, I started 29, for as much then as we are all offspring of God, we ought not think that the Godhead, see, the Bible don't use Trinity. It says Godhead. Father, Son, Holy Ghost is the Godhead, not Trinity. Man made that up. Is it of God or is it of men? For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's devices. God is not anything mortal like we can think of or we can imagine. We can't conceive of the Godhead. The man said that he understands the Godhead is a liar. He doesn't know. We don't. Have, that's God's. That's God's business. How he can, three can be one. See, in our math, three means three. But God said three is one. These three are one. There's three that bear witness in the heaven, and those three are one. Verse thirty. At the times of this ignorance, see, of the ignorance, not the sin. See, the sin happened out of ignorance, but you can't plead ignorance now. You can't plead victim now. You can't play blame game, see? Because Oprah always have you pointing the finger at somebody else. Michael Bay is, oh, it was that person's fault. It's that person. It's never your fault. But you know what? Each one of you out there under the sound of my voice, guilty. And the only way you can have your sins covered is by the spotless Lamb of God. And it's got to be in truth. Not because you just, oh, I love the Lord and I just want to go and I want truth. You want truth, you're going to follow what the Bible says. At the time of this ignorance, God went. He overlooked it. God went at the ignorance. Not the sin. The sin is still sin. But God judges the sin how he want to and when he want to. Nobody tell God when to do what he... God is a man of his word. God is a just judge. At the time of his ignorance, God went. 
but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. That's everybody. That's every nation. Not just because you're Israelite, just because you're a Hebrew, not because you're black, not because you're white, not because you're tall, not because you're... Every man everywhere must repent. Look, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You're going to be saved by your faith. And your faith is associated with a belief. Your belief is associated with an obedience. You have to obey the gospel to be saved. You want to be saved? Hear the gospel. The gospel is the death, peril, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You believe in that gospel. You repent of your sin. Make up in your mind you're going to turn away from sin and turn toward God. You confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He's the anointed one. He is the Messiah. He is the Messiah. You confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and we'll baptize you in water today. Brother Spencer, I thank you for listening.